Let's take a look at a lateral continuity in the fountain formation. Now, the fountain formation is familiar to people here who live in Woodland Park because um, they've probably been down to Colorado Springs. Because in Colorado Springs, one of the most, the coolest places, maybe one of those beautiful places in the world, is um, the Garden of the Gods. Now, the fountain formation is um, the formation of the Garden of the Gods. I forgot a picture of that, Mr. Chief. Now, if you aren't familiar with that, let me show you a picture of the fountain formation found in the Garden of the Gods. This is what it looks like, one of the most pretty places on the earth. This right here is the fountain formation uh, of the Garden of the Gods. But now if you go back to our geologic map, the, the uh, fountain formation is this sort of purpley color thing. I think in the other one, I wasn't sure if it was purple or blue. I double checked. It's this sort of purple or li with the lines. We can see it right here as well, etc. This is up Colorado Springs. You can also see it through here. You also find it uh, up in the Denver area, which I don't, you can't see. But the thing that's intriguing here is you don't have to go very far from Woodland Park, where we live, and you can find this fountain formation right here too, up in the mountains. Well, this right here is about seven, you know, maybe 6,500 feet. And here in Woodland Park, or outside of Woodland Park, you're probably another thousand, or maybe even this is probably 8,000 feet. I don't know exactly, but we could figure it out. Um, but these things were originally formed horizontally, which we talked about horizontality, and now they've been uplifted and then are separated. But these rock formations are the same formation. So we have the principle of lateral continuity. Even though there's been something else that's happened in the in-between times here, we have this happening. We have the, uh, the same formation separated by this huge igneous. Remember, this is the igneous, uh, this is the Pikes Peak uh, granite section right here, this whole area right here, all this Pikes Peak, lots of granite that we see as the bedrock. So interesting uh, uh, correlation. All right, the principle of cross-cutting relationships. Now, we're not talking about a saw that cross-cuts, okay? This is a geologic feature which cuts another is the younger of the two features. So if you see a feature that cuts through other features, it is younger. The classic example of this would be um, section D right here. D is actually what we call a volcanic dike. What it does is it shoots through. Um, it's like a tube of, of vol a volcanic igneous rock that comes through. See, A was laid, laid down first, and then we eventually had uh, whatever this is called right here. Actually, C. A and C were all A. This is A, and this is C. Um, and then there was a fault. But the D right here happened after the fact. So it is called the cross-cutting relationships. In fact, you can also even see that B has the same kind of a concept here, is that B came after, even though it might be it's in between all these other things. Yeah. Another thing I should say about this one is we see some faults. The faults are the lines, this line right here. So when did these faults take place? Well, you see um, letter C right here, OK? That's this sort of brown color. Letter C used to be up here, right? And then this faulted, right? This is a normal fault where we have the, uh, this fault happened. But this fault happened after C was laid down, but before E, because E has come in. E is unfaulted right here. So E is the youngest feature on this map. All right, and then the last topic before we kind of do the practice problems, which is going to be tricky, is a bear is an unconformity. Okay, it's a buried erosion surface separating two rock masses or strata of different ages, indicating the sediment deposition was not continuous. In general, the older layer was exposed to erosion for an inter interval of time before deposition of the younger. You can copy this down, but the term is used to describe any break in the sedimentary geologic record. You probably want to pause and then jot that down, and then let's. Let's uh, picture what this looks like, or uh, put it probably in English. Here's the unconformity that makes the most sense to me, at least. Here we have two layers of rock. Let me change the color. Maybe a red or something. We have two layers of rock. Hello, did I not just choose red? A red that needs a red to pin. Where's my a red to pin? I got the red to pin. Okay, so here we have um, a. Br it probably goes like that. So here we have rock A. And here we have rock B, totally different rocks, OK? Now, if you um, read the text over here, we discover that the top rock is 500 million years old. And the bottom rock is 1.5 billion years old. Whoa, that's a huge difference. I need an eye to it. What happened? Well, the answer is we don't know. Basically, what happened is this 
rock was laid down a very, very long time. And then probably other things happened over the course of time, but they've all eroded away. And then layer B. And then we don't, you know, then we got new stuff on top here. But the interesting thing here is that we have then unconformity because it doesn't follow a continuous. You can't say, well, there was this history and then this history and this history. They may, I mean, we don't know what happened. There might have been, you know, if this was our 1.5 billion year rock, and then we can have rock A, B, and then we have our 500. A and B are gone. They have disappeared um, from the rock record. That is then called an unconformity. Okay? Now I want to do several um, analyses of cross sections. When we do these analyses of a cross section, our goal is to figure out um, the order in which each feature happened. What is the oldest rock and what is the youngest rock? And we've already kind of talked about this one, but um, A really here is this sort of blue and brown thing. So we've got A, we've got C, which is this sort of flat formation, probably a sedimentary rock. D would be an igneous rock intrusion. B is also an igneous rock. We've got E, C, of course, we've still got, and then we have F. F is the, uh, is the uh, fault. Okay, so when did the fault occur? So let's think this through. What would be the oldest rock here? Well, the oldest rock is A. So oldest is A. Because then after A happened, the strange thing that happened is that we get, um, it's either B or C. I'm thinking this through. Hold on. Um, yeah, since B comes up here and C's on top of B, it'll be B, and then B. B happens. And then we see C. C happens next. They're probably going to go in order. I don't know. I've just isn't. C happens third. And then D's going to occur because, see, D is cross-cutting. See how D goes through A? Hold on. D also goes through B. Yeah, what well, B second? Okay. So D cuts through B, so it means he's younger than B. He cuts through A, and he cuts through C. So that means he is older or younger than all of those. Um, and then E happens. No, actually, this is a good question here. And then the next thing that's going to happen is this fault. F is the fault, right? This is F right here. So F is going to happen next because this we get the. Uh, this right here, the, uh, the fault. And then lastly, we get E. So this is the oldest, where E is the youngest feature. Hopefully that makes sense. We're going to do several of these. What you probably ought to do is either sketch them or print them.